All right, everybody, time to spin this wheel. Now, you'll notice that I've eliminated wheel spinning from most of my other reviews, but the retro stuff, which I'm happy to get back into, uh, just look at how many, I just got so many. And the fact is, I bought all of these games, unlike my Steam games, where I have hundreds of them that I did not purchase, and what they actually are is a total crapshoot. But yeah. I, these are all games I personally selected, so they all got to be winners, right? Probably. Usually get a lot of Atari games and NES games because that's what I've got a lot of. Let's see. Ooh, boy. All right. All right. Let's do it. I do it to it. All right, let's talk Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. Man. Uh, yeah, this game, boy howdy, what, what are you going to see right off the bat? Well, you're going to see an opening cinematic, uh, which was super rare for handheld games especially. I mean, not every NES game even had an opening cinematic, you know? Um, you, you think about things like Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts. It went under many different names. I can't remember which was the one that was on the NES, which was SNES, and which was everything else. You know the one. Uh, weird bat guy steals your girlfriend and you put on your armor and go chuck lances at everything until you're uh, running around buck naked and then you die a lot because that game is crazy hard. You know the one I'm talking about. Ghosts and goblins. Ghouls and ghosts. Ghosties and Grumbles. Anyway, uh, yeah, it just, you didn't see a lot of opening cinematics, and that sets a precedent with this game, um, indicating that, like, oh, we are pushing the boundaries. We are doing the most that we can do with the hardware that we have, uh, because this is a late entry. Uh, one of the things that's easy to forget is that uh, Game Boy games on the original monochrome old school Game Boy were still being released well into the life cycle of the SNES. This game came out in 1993, um, and it came out after A Link to the Past, which is hands down the greatest Zelda game ever made. Um, I'm sorry, that's how I feel about it. I play that game... It, it seems like every now and again I just get the itch and I'm like, I gotta beat Link to the Past again. And I just go and play it. And boy, what a delight. What an utter, absolute delight. And so, the thing that I learned today that I did not originally know is that this game was intended to be a portable port of A Link to the Past. And, and then it just kind of grew its own legs and turned into its own thing once they got going. They took some of the gameplay elements, like you'll see early on in the gameplay footage, that uh, once I get my sword, which, by the way, like, um... <laughs> here's how I know about how long the game takes to beat for, like, people who are, unlike myself, a mere mortal who is going to die a lot. Um, but people who are actually really, really good at this and know, uh, where things are and what to do and whatnot. Um, I haven't played this game in forever, uh, which is a shame. I don't play my Game Boy as much as I ought to, but, you know, it's hard. When you have a bajillion games and a bajillion consoles, it's hard to give everything the respect that they deserve, which is why I have this channel in the first place. This is a part of me appreciating my own collection uh, because I feel like I don't do it enough because of how very many awesome things I have. And when I look at them, I'm like, boy, I've got some really great games. And then, you know, when it comes time to play a game, it's like, well, should I beat Skyrim again or should I just play No Man's Sky? <laughs> or maybe, I'll start another Minecraft world and then abandon it eventually. You know, like, it just... Uh, it's easy to fall into the same ruts in terms of gaming, and it's easy to neglect uh, the old classics. Anyway, regardless, uh, just note with the gameplay footage that aside from knowing how to get my sword, 
I don't know what the crap I'm doing most of the time because uh, I just, I don't know. I haven't looked up guides and whatnot. I'm trying to have the gameplay experience as it was intended. You know, because we all know that, um, what's his name? Guy. The, the guy. You know the guy. The, the guy who made all the Nintendo games. That one. Um, <laughs> who invented Legend of Zelda to begin with. Um, I'm blanking on his name, and he's like a monolithic character of the world of video games. I, I feel dumb. That would be like forgetting the name of Nintendo. But yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know who I'm talking about. You're shouting it at your screen. But yeah, you know, invented your Super Mario Bros, invented your Legend of Zelda, all the things. Um, but he said when he made Legend of Zelda, what he was trying to do was create this... The, the feeling of what it's like to just wander around as a kid and, like, just have the freedom of exploration. And so, yeah, aside from figuring out how to get my sword, which was a serious problem at first, like, I started recording gameplay footage, um, or no, I started playing the game to make sure that I knew how to play it, um, and I got a little ways in, and then I deleted that game save, because I wanted to show you the opening cinematic, and all of the opening information about, like, oh, it's not Zelda, you're washed up on this island, and people actually say something if you go through their stuff, and you can't just pick up pots and smash them and whatnot, like, it, they immediately clue you in, this is a different world, uh, you know, the girl is like, Zelda, I don't know who that is, that's not me, uh, <laughs> And so, yeah, it's, it tells you right away, you're in a different place, this is outside the realm of normal Zelda everything, you know, does not take place in the kingdom of Hyrule. Um, and in order to get back to Hyrule, in order to get back to where you're from, you, you gotta wake the wind fish, and this owl tells you that that's what you gotta do. Um, yeah, and so in order to wake the wind fish, you gotta co go collect five, uh, things, w what are they called? Come on now, brain. Oh yeah, you're collecting instruments, that's what it is. Eight instruments in order to wake the wind fish, um, and of course you do this through, uh, going into dungeons, beating bosses, solving puzzles, the exact same way that you do in every Zelda game. Um, and, and this one, like, it's funny because, l let's just get this out into the open, like, Link's Awakening happened at a time when, like, uh, Game Boy was, eh, you know, like, it was reaching the end of its life cycle, Game Boy Color was about to come out, there is a DX version of this game, which anytime you see the DX, you know that that's just, it's a, it's a port. It's another game that was released either on the NES or the original Game Boy, and this is a color remaster of the game, basically, essentially. Um, and so yes, there is a Game Boy Color version of this game, which I do not have. Um, I don't think, pretty sure. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but the main thing that people will know, because this game kind of got neglected by everybody for a little while, um, until they made a Switch version of it, and this caused people to complain because then they were charging full price for a game that, like, it's, it's not that long of a game, even in terms of Zelda games, it's certainly not as long as A Link to the Past, and it's, you know, it's slightly longer than the original Legend of Zelda if you have a walkthrough and know how to not get lost. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's, it, you know, it can be a fairly short game. A lot of the walkthroughs I was seeing um, are, uh, you know, about an hour long. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you're wondering how to get the sword, you've definitely seen me do it by now, but like, use your shield, push the urchin. That was not intuitive. It just, you know, that sign tells you like, don't touch him with your bare hands, and you're like, I won't. <laughs> and it didn't occur to me that I could just push them with my shield. Anyway, I don't know why it didn't, but it didn't. 
Um, so, yeah, um, you get your sword, and then away you go, and then I'm off and wandering, you know, and I go generally where the owl tells me to go. You go to the mysterious forest, which there's a sign that's like, it's a little bit mysterious. One of the funny things about this game is that it starts bringing the sense of humor early on, and also, like, I love it when pixel art type games can bring in a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, character to the characters. You know, when, um, oh, what's her name? You know, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the girl who finds you on the beach when she wakes you up and whatnot, like that whole sequence is very, like, there's a lot of character in it. And, you know, there's a lot of character early on when you're meeting her and her dad and then the, you know, the little kids you talk to that explain, like, it says push these buttons, but I don't know what that means because I'm a real person. I'm a real boy playing ball right now. Buttons? Who's got buttons? That's weird. Anyway, you know, like, it's got a real funny sense of humor and a sort of self-awareness, a little tongue-in-cheek uh, interestingness uh, that endeared this game to everybody. But the simple fact is, like, a lot of people may be turned off to the original of this game by, you know, and it's not that I have the Link's Awakening for the Switch. Um, and if you go into that with tempered expectations, then you're going to be fine. Um, but because it came out after Breath of the Wild and stuff, people were like, What? I beat this game in an hour? Fooey! Fie on that! I can't just wander around this world like Skyrim forever? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh, b because it costed the same when they originally released it. I waited till it went on sale at Walmart for Christmas. That's when I got it for, like, half the price, at least. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I did not pay full price. That is the important thing. I did not pay full price for the Switch version of this game. But, uh, yeah, I understand why people were upset about it. Uh, because there's no world in which, like, the short amount of gameplay that you get for this game on the Switch should be worth the same as you know, Breath of the Wild, but, like, also they're very different games, trying to do very different things. So, yeah, just everybody calm your butts. Like, find your butt, grab it with both hands, and calm it. I don't know. Just calm your butt. Um, but, yeah, for real. Uh, this game has all of the charm of Link to the Past, and... It also has its own unique little vibe because you're on an island that is not the same as other things. And so some of the enemies are there from Link to the Past. And some of the enemies are completely new to this game. And some of the enemies, uh, you know, like the way the bats look and, the, and behave, remind me very much of the original Legend of Zelda. So you know, it, it really merges together a lot of the best things from the best Zelda games up to this point in Zelda history. So, for what it is, it is a charming, charming little game. Uh, for real. You know, and, and there are things that it doesn't tell you right off the bat. Like, nobody stops. Like, you know, in A Link to the Past, when you fall down the hole, you go see your dad. Uh, he dies right off the beginning, like, uh, anyway, but, like, he gives you his sword and shield, and, and then is like, hey, if you hold the button, then you'll charge your sword attack and do it the way that our people have done for generations, is something, some explanation like that. Um, yeah, it doesn't tell you to do that in this game, it just assumes, like, Oh, if you're playing this, you've probably played other Legend of Zelda games. Y you should probably know that you can do this. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't know at first. And then I was like, hey, I wonder. And I tried and it was there. And I was like, oh, there you go. You know, charged sword attack. Not always helpful, but sometimes very helpful. 
Um, yeah, and and there are some new wrinkles like you get these guardian acorns occasionally that are enemy drops and it cuts the amount of damage that you take in half. Uh, you get a piece of power which looks like a Triforce piece. When you first see it, you're very excited. You're like, oh my god, I found a Triforce piece and all it, all it did was, you know, kill a slime or whatever. <laughs> And I got a Triforce piece. No, no, calm down. You didn't get a Triforce piece. What you got was a piece of power, which makes your sword super much powerful. We're talking one hit kills on most enemies. So it's, it's a whole thing. Sorry, this is gonna seem disjointed. I had to pause there for a second. The things going on in the background. Anyway, sorry, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Uh, I, I think I was mentioning, you know, gameplay things, uh, that you can do, um, in this game. Anyway, yeah, th there's a lot of things, uh, one of the really annoying things I will say is that things that you can't pick up yet, because you need some version of the Titan's Mitt from, uh, Link to the Past, you know, whatever that thing is in this game, I don't remember and did not make it that far, um... <laughs> But yeah, you, you need something to help you lift things, um, and you will spend uh, a stupid amount of time accidentally running into things, and then it'd be like, you can't lift this yet. And you're like, I, I, I literally was not trying to. I just, you know, accidentally run into the rock that I can't lift yet. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that's a little annoying. But aside from that, like... Uh, you know, there are decent, but yeah, uh, sorry, keep having distractions and pausing things. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but also in order to maintain the sort of stream of consciousness that I, uh, value in my reviews rather than writing out a tight script and, you know, being like, I am Mr. Professional Script Guy. I, I like shooting from the hip and being like, nah, this is how I felt in the moment. And how I felt in the moment about this game is that I really like it. I do. I, I really, really like it. You know, I have most of the Legend of Zelda games. There are not very many that I do not have in some form or another. I, I don't think I have an original Majora's Mask on the N64, but I do have the 3DS remake. I think that's the only one. Pretty sure. Might be others. I, I mean, including some of the weird ones, like Spirit Tracks and whatnot. Like, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of Zelda games over the course of the entire series. And I do intend to play and beat them all at some point. You know, my current uh, ongoing task that I've set for myself is to beat all of the Final Fantasy games. And I'm on Final Fantasy VI right now. I uh, haven't picked it up in a minute because I was playing other things. Uh, I need to pick it back up <laughs> and so that once I finish all of the Final Fantasies then I'm going to play all the Zeldas which like by the time I'm done whatever sequel to Tears of the Kingdom will be out by then who knows on what device that will be ooh the Super Switch the Switch Deluxe the Switch 2 ooh the Switch U yeah, that's what it's going to be, the Switch U. Uh, by the way, I love the Wii U. You, you know this. We've talked about this. Anyway, regardless, the, the point is that there's a tremendous amount of charm packed into this small little cartridge, and if you go in with the expectation that, like, okay, this is as much linked to the past as you could fit on a Game Boy cartridge in 1993 then you're going to go in with the right frame of mind to understand that, like, it's not the longest game in the world, it's not the hardest game in the world, it's, you know, uh, it is what it is. And, and what it is, it's fun, it's just fun. You know, it, it's not going to uh, break your brain, um, it's not going to, uh, you know, be super much challenging. Uh, cause I stayed alive most of the time, uh, a lot of Zelda games, like, I, I will have died at least once by now, you know, like, I, I'm not Mr. Super Amazing at these kind of things. 
Um, except for I'm fairly decent at Link to the Past because I've played it a lot. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not going to be the longest game that you play. It's not going to be the hardest game that you play, but it is going to be extremely charming and a unique little feel in the world of Zelda, you know, where you're not in Hyrule and you're off doing your own thing. Anyway, let me put a final score on it and then we'll wrap it. All right, everyone, final score for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. We are going a 9 out of a possible 10 Shigeru's Miyamoto. Because, yes, I did have to look it up and remind myself, like, who's that guy who invented my childhood and all the good things in it? Like, for real. For real, though. Like, I mean, n not everything. He didn't invent Voltron, but, like, aside from that, like, most everything else was his. So, yeah. Uh, forgetting his name is literally like forgetting the name of Nintendo, uh, itself, because of how monolithic the man was, and still is, because he's still doing it. Anyway, it, it would be like forgetting Stan Lee's name, you know? Like, who's that guy who invented all the things I like? Hmm, I forget. Yeah, anyway, regardless, apologies to the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Mr. Miyamoto himself. Anyway, and, and we, we give a score 9 out of 10 of him in pixel art form, which, uh, this pixel art version of him, uh, is by Kyle Olson. Just give it, uh, th at least that's where I found it, is from a Kyle Olson. I, I don't know, I hope he's the creator of the pixel art. I do appreciate being able to find a pixel art Miyamoto. Uh, anyway, people, that's going to do it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.